Mr. Pomeroy, do you think you could clean this gentleman's jacket? Reckon so. Perhaps you'd better empty the pockets, Mr. Lake. You can't keep me here. Is that all? Thank you, Mr. Pomeroy. Now, Mr. Legg. I need a doctor. I gave express instructions that no one was to leave. Why did you choose to run off? I had to. Had to? Yes, had to. I couldn't spend another minute in that room. Everyone looking at me as if I did it. I have bad nerves. I'm highly strung. Ah, yes, of course. Your, your illness. Seven years, I think you said. Pentonville Prison, wasn't it? I don't deny my prison sentence. Grotesquely unjust though it was. It was a hundred times worse than any illness. Dunnethel should have rotted in that prison until he died. You murdered Luke Watchman. No. Because you believed he got an athel off of the light sentence at your expense. He did. By shifting the blame onto you. He did. And all the time with that damn smile on his face. Well, perhaps you murdered him because you feared he would expose your past as a Nazi sympathizer. You're improvising. You haven't got a case. Oh, but I have, Mr. Legg. <laughs> it's the oldest cheat in the book. If you can't find the guilty one, you pin it on the nearest man with a criminal record. How dare you? Convince me. I not only know that you did it, I know how you did it. You took the iodine bottle from the upstairs bathroom. You laced it with cyanide from the rat hole. And then, using the pretext of a shaving cut, you gained access to the first aid box and the cupboard in the bar. Luke Watchman died the way you planned it. Not from a poison dart, but from poisoned iodine. And this evening you got scared and you attempted to poison Inspector Fox and myself. Now, what do you say to that, Mr. Alexander Pringle? What an intriguing maze a policeman's mind is. I would like to see that, Doctor, now, please, if I may.